self-optimization inside the automated machine learning pipeline using Mesos with Prometheus and a nonlinear time series evolutionary system where we'll be analyzing alleles like in biological sense different species in an environment that is competitive what variable can we hold fixed and compare the different moving averages of that uh, restriction on various distributions and adapting that to the vanilla uh, site reliability engineering uh, bible if you will but also sticking to that single layer neural network that we have uh, established in this course in this case in our python script we'll be finding the instance of a feed forward uh, neural network with sigmoid activation functions here we're querying a concatenated array of values or a stack of values uh, a subset problem of finding a, um, a minimum spanning sum, if you will. And um, the target of this is to project a feasible learning rate that will adapt in comparison to a, a fitness function, a sigmoid adaptive uh, hyperbolic tangent. Uh, inverse in a Fourier uh, transform sense of a point, a point-wise object in a time series. The error that gets uh, propagated needs to be the Cartesian equivalent of a finite difference. Here we are pretty much establishing that there is a divergence from the origin. And we would like to know this random path if it follows a specific epoch and if it is countable. Meaning, can we find the frequency, can we distinguish between one epoch and another based on its previous movement if we're able to partition this random walk in a Riemann manifold, we would be able to get the Cartesian coordinates of a time-stamped uh, domain specific uh, query or a hive query. And if we have a stream of information that we have to evaluate, we're looking at a nonlinear distribution or a time series that has many peaks and trails and spikes. Spikes being anomalies within the Fourier transform. We are utilizing a window size here as a cache, as a memory cache, very similar to your run-of-the-mill uh, window memory algorithm interview question. The Manhattan metric gives us a Cartesian equivalent to finding the finite difference in a feed forward single layer uh, neural network with error back propagation. Error back propagation within this growth delta factor where we're updating the weight as we go along. And in the case of extreme learning machines that I will touch upon in the next uh, few minutes, we'll be dealing with leaving that weight uh, random and propagating a randomized value based on, you know, extra spatial temporal values that give you an intuition of that confounding element that can deviate your uh, distribution and, and, and definitely give you insight 
into the time series about where that error, that, you know, where you can go exactly if it's a regional issue, then you would know um, the job scheduler, the, the, the task, the cluster, and specifically what port it's communicating with and what PID it's actually querying. Deep learning can actually extract information from parsing of HTML run-of-the-mill WebAssembly and figure out exactly where there's actually loss of information, where there's actually this uh, obtuse granularity in the time series. Within pandas, numpy, sys, scipy stats, pretty run-of-the-mill Python script to give you a single layer feedforward uh, neural network. In this case, we're also going to get information on the kurtosis or the amount of spiking in the time series. These would be essential in outlying detec detection. And if we're able to turn this kurtosis into this modularity that we can query as a range, and it can give us thresholds, we can analyze how the covariance and the variance have an effect on the skewedness of the probability distribution, the skewedness of be that the latency and the throughput, or an index that it could give you both. In this case, we will refer to this as the Soliton curvature. This would be the metrics, if you will, that robust system that gives you the Cartesian equivalent XY of a specific event uh, translated into a mathematical environment. In this case, it's very important for me to uh, single out that the window, as I said, is it's that cache, and we can give it a different sense of frame depending on what we need to do. And in this case, we're querying for that grid search result being the Manhattan metric, the Cartesian absolute value. Finite difference of that uh, point where that event diverged from the simple moving average. And if this actually is greater than one, then we already have the original kurtosis that we can actually build models from in a iterative fashion. And we do that here by doing a pretty simple binary search of an element-wise uh, comparison in a range of normalized uh, concatenated values. Therefore, if the kurtosis is the projection of, of these spikes, and are normalized, of course, then we can definitely build the concept of a tensor, which will be useful for that um, gradient descent analysis that we will touch upon, and you can see on screen, for different hidden values.